Welcome back. So what are your thoughts about decentralization? How do you understand local government? Do you think that DCEs should be elected rather than appointed? Well, hopefully these and more questions will be addressed and answered adequately right about now on Sunrise. Because with me in the studio is a man who comes to us from the Interministerial Coordinating Committee on Decentralization. He is the finance officer and his name is Thomas Nyako Ampem. Mr. Ampem, good morning and welcome to Sunrise. Thank you. How are you doing? Well, decentralization, you know, it's been with us since uh, the 1980s. Uh, 1980. Eight. 1988 and the 1992 constitution spells it out quite clearly uh, in many ways uh, Ghana has been a model has been lauded by many other developing countries I see here that you've got a really you know a high powered uh, committee the president uh, is uh, is constituting it uh, as chairman and you've got everybody here from the Minister of Local Government right to the Ministers of Finance and Economic Planning, Education, Health, Food and Agriculture, the Attorney General, Head of the Local Government Service, Head of the Civil Service, Chairman of the NDPC, National Development Planning Commission. Tell me, I mean, like very briefly, in layman's language, what exactly does your committee do and how? Okay, thank you. Uh, before I say that, let me uh, quickly uh, say that decentralization actually uh, started with us during the colonial era. You remember uh, there was indirect rule. The, the uh, colonial masters were ruling us through uh, our chiefs. But like you rightly said, the current decentralization uh, started in 1988. And for about 25 years now, we have been implementing it. Uh, the IMCC, in short, uh, which is the Interministerial Coordinating Committee, which you uh, earlier on mentioned, is being chaired initially by the vice president and then with all the people you listed as members of the committee. But when the vice president became president because of his passion for decentralization, he indicated that he would want to continue to chair it. So it moved from the office of the vice president to the office of the president. What the IMCC does is uh, to coordinate decentralization uh, uh, policies uh, over two decades of implementation of uh, the current decentralization, we realized that what was lacking was effective coordination. Um, local government ministry was doing its part. There are a number of uh, ministries whose departments are also decentralized, and they were also working independently. We have other um, institutions like the Institute of Local Government Studies, the Local Government Service Secretariat, all doing some aspect of our decentralization and the efforts were not perfectly coordinated so we were not getting the impact so in 2009 it was realized that there was the need to have uh, a, a coordinating body to bring all these uh, efforts together for maximum effect that is what brought in the IMCC. Okay you keep mentioning uh, impact and effect and results and I'm wondering what it is that uh, citizens should or could feel uh, given that uh, decentralization is truly effective. Uh, one viewer posts that decentralization is the government at the grassroots level. Actually, he posted under grassroots levels, and this is Nanako Jawusu and Sa the second. He thinks that decentralization is government at the grassroots level. Does that mean that uh, if we, once we have uh, truly 100% you know, effective decentralization, I could access uh, any key ministry, any sector ministry, like uh, the ones that are represented on your committee, where I live, right, where I live. I could go to the local uh, DCE's office and uh, get all the services that I need. I wouldn't need to come to Accra. I wouldn't need to come to the ministry. I wouldn't need to do any of that. I could get what I need in terms of uh, services, uh, information, support, help, whatever it is, right uh, where I live. That is where we are working towards. In fact, the district assemblies are required to uh, give municipal services uh, to the, the districts that is under the areas under their jurisdiction. So you will agree that you don't have to travel to Accra only to register a company. You don't have to travel to Accra to have a birth certificate and all these things. So these services are being decentralized. So. Uh, wherever you are in the country, you should be able to assess them with ease. We admit that we have not been able to achieve that completely, 
but it is a gradual process and uh, for now it is ongoing. So we'll get Okay, uh, Albert Cashmond, uh, who is joining us online, says, uh, Hi, Eric Tell, uh, Mr. Thomas, that I like his suit. Not a viewer, you know, Prince Kojai Board thinks that I am looking good. So we are looking good, we are talking good about this. I mean, how well is it working? We've been doing this for what, 20 years? Uh, how do we measure progress? There has been steady progress, uh, even though we haven't been content with uh, the level of progress. Uh, you realize that decentralization in Ghana has over the years been uh, supply driven. Government gets up and say we will do this, we will do that. The people themselves are not demanding for decentralization. Um, government makes a promise that we will do this. Uh, an example is composite budget. This had been on the drawing board for over two decades. About 21 years, we said we would implement composite budgeting. For 20 years, nobody was asking questions. It took government 20 years to implement composite budget. You see, so uh, we need to have the demand side of, of decentralization. The citizens need to begin to ask questions. You have promised to do this. Why aren't you doing it? You know, these are the aspects that are lacking, and that is why the pace, that is partly why the pace has been uh, quite slow. Okay. Whom would a citizen ask this of? The citizen, uh, for instance, uh, district assemblies are supposed to have um, a public relations and complaints committees where individuals can go there to ask questions, to make complaints, and all that. Uh, those few district assemblies that have them are not recording enough no, no patronage by, by the citizens. We have civil society organizations that are aligned to local governance and decentralization. They need to step up and then begin to take active uh, role, uh, part in all the activities that happen and begin to ask questions at the assembly level, at the local uh, uh, ministry of local government level, at the RCC levels. These are all levels available for us to ask questions. You want people to uh, articulate more demand, you know, express uh, more of their thoughts, uh, put more pressure at the local level. It looks like uh, all the attention, however, is uh, that who is uh, getting what when it comes to appointments. And many people have called for the election of DCs. You say people should be able to go to their local, you know, uh, district assembly, ask for whatever it is that they need in terms of municipal services. Let's uh, look at drainage, let's look at water and sanitation, hygiene, uh, energy, road infrastructure, whatever it is, health, education. You should be able to go to your local uh, district assembly and uh, get things done. But unfortunately, this doesn't seem to be working this way. And from what you're saying is because people are simply not going there yet, there is uh, quite a bit of attention on DCEs. What, uh, what, what, what is the function of the DCE when it comes to delivering truly decentralized government services to people in Ghana? But the functions of a DC, a DC is the chief representative of the central government in his district. And um, he oversees the administrative and executive, he performs the administrative and executive functions of the assembly. Um, he is overall to oversee the activities of the assembly and ensure that those municipal uh, uh, facilities are provided over there. Uh, so these are the, 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 the so, so an individual will not come all the way to the, the, the capital to look for a minister or to look for the president for simple solutions to, to be performed. So if you take a, a district uh, as an entity, the D district chief executive is supposed to head it and perform all those functions. Now, outside of ministerial realignment, there is also the possibility of duplication of roles. So, for example, I go to, uh, to the ministry and I say, oh, please, I need help uh, in this regard where I live. Whom should I go to? They say, oh, please go back to your DCE. I go to the DCE, he says, go back to the ministry. It's almost as if uh, both, uh, both the, the district assembly and the sector ministry are doing the same thing and no one is quite sure where citizens should tend to. Actually, if you look at our national decentralization policy framework, which was launched in uh, 2009, it redefines uh, decentralization at the national level to mean ministerial restructuring. 
and then at the regional level is uh, uh, deconcentration. Devolution is at the district level. That is where the actual implementation takes place. At the re uh, regional and national level, they are to concerned with policies and monitoring and stuff like that. The real implementation of programs are to be done at the district level. So if you move all the way to uh, the, the ministries and they direct you to your, your, your district, rightly so, because that is where implementation of all these programs and activities are supposed to take place. Supposed to take place, but are they taking place? And I know yes. this is of particular interest to you because you are the financial officer and duplication of functions means duplication of cost and the reduction, perhaps a halving or more, of the cost effectiveness of these services being delivered where they are needed in the most direct and cost effective way. You see, what is happening currently is that if you look at uh, the District Assembly Common Fund, which is the main source of revenue to the assemblies. It is just 7.5% of government revenue. This is what is given to the, the assemblies, shared to all the 200 and now 216 district assemblies for projects and for all the staff. So the chunk of the finances are being retained at the national level. I'm sure gradually we will be transferring more and more funds and then functions. You see, so the functions that are being transferred to the districts, some resources are also added onto it. And the more functions we transfer to the uh, districts, the more resources we have to send to them. To, uh, for them to be able to, to implement those, those activities. I mean, aside of uh, managing or redistributing the functions and uh, financial resources that go with them, what are some of the other challenges and uh, key difficulties that you've come up with? What we realize is that apart from the, the common fund, the districts are also required to uh, internally generate revenue. Uh, our secretary, we have a research team, so they conducted some research and it, it, it came to light that uh, most of the districts don't have the capacity to generate a lot of revenue. If you take uh, AMA, KMA, well they are, you know, uh, somehow developed areas so their internally generated funds are quite significant, but you go to m most of the districts uh, there are only sources of internally generated funds are market tolls and you know th th so they are not able to raise enough revenue to do other things so we would uh, hope that as time goes on more and more resources will be transferred to the districts and that will enhance their activities a lot. No. Where, where would these resources come from? Where, where w what would the source of the additional means be? Right now, there is something that is called DDF, and uh, that is also another source. That is from GOG, I mean, Government of Ghana and Development Partners. They give that uh, revenue. But I'm looking at increasing the percentage. As we want to shift more functions to the district uh, assemblies, we also should be in the position to give them a greater percentage of, uh, uh, more percentage of the government revenue, not 7.5 maybe 10 or more. Well, these functions uh, effectively translate into power, of administrative, uh, executive power and authority. Now, how willing are the district assemblies, for example, to take on more, given that they don't have enough uh, resources, as you just uh, pointed out? And how willing are the key sector ministries to give up this uh, amount of administrative authority, quote-unquote, power? For the willingness of the district, I think they, they will be willing to be given a more lot more authority, uh, yes, power, a lot more Respons resources, a lot of more, yes. Uh, so for that part, I don't think anybody would say, don't give me resources to work, don't give me functions, no. The, the, the other side will be uh, whether the, those wielding the power now will be willing to let more of them go. And we have seen from commitment of our leadership that yes, decentralization is key to the president, it is key to, to all his ministers. So they are given the, the, the uh, functions and the functions must be followed by the resources. So yes, we will. One thing that uh, comes up again and again in uh, public-private uh, dialogue 
is the fact that we have great policies, we have effective uh, looking committees, but then somehow when it comes to translating this into pragmatic programs, things that people can feel, well in a relatively short period of time, we seem to hit administrative bottlenecks. Do you have any of those uh, within the workings of your committee? Yes, in fact, those are the reasons why the IMCC was uh, actually established, because we had very good policies that were not being implemented. And if you realize, um, until the IMCC came into force, it was the uh, Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development that was leading decentralization issues. And that is only one ministry. There are other ministries involved in decentralization. And so there was the need for all these bodies to come together. So things like composite budgeting that had been on the uh, drawing board for a long time are being implemented now because of the, the, the coming together of all the people concerned to implement it. So yes, uh, th there has been that problem, but gradually it is being solved. I'm speaking to Thomas Nyaku. He's a finance officer of the IMCC, the Interministerial Coordinating Committee, that's been tasked with uh, monitoring, evaluating, and implementing decentralization in Ghana. It's a very high-powered committee. It's got the president chairing it, and it's got uh, representatives from all the key sector ministries. There is uh, government, local government and rural development. I can see finance and economic planning, education, health, food and agriculture, the attorney general's office, the head of the local government service, the head of the civil service, and the chairman of the NDPC, the National Development Planning Committee. Now, all the ministries are represented by the ministers. So one question that might pop to mind is, how much priority do each of these uh, sector ministries and ministers allot to the IMCC? A lot of priority. If you have the whole president chairing that committee, how much uh, uh, can you withhold? Uh, they, they give all the necessary priorities that it need to. And that is why we have been able to uh, make those progress that have been made over the last four years. And let me quickly say that there are technical, we have a technical committee of the IMCC, which is made up of the chief directors of all those ministries you, you mentioned. And they actually do the technical work before the IMCC itself meets to consider technical work. Well, there's one technical term that uh, you've mentioned a couple of times, composite budgeting, and I'd like to ask you what that means. But before then, I want to take a caller from a decentralized uh, part of Ghana, uh, someone calling us from Tamale, I believe. Hello? Hello? Ah, hi. Good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you? Very well, thank you. My name is Eric, and what is yours? I am Hamza Zakari. Mr. Zachary, welcome to Sunrise. What would you like to ask or comment on? Yeah, in fact, I'm enjoying your discussion, and it Thank is you. very, very important I make this simple. Sir, if you will recall, the concept of decentralization is to make governance closer to the rural food, if I know, do have I stand for correction. But then, for, can you see that Almost all the ministries, head of department, are all in Accra. Why is Accra choke is one of these problems? For instance, can't we send maybe Minister of Agri to say Bolsar is the Minister of uh, Health to say Bolsar and decentralize for me? Uh, Accra should be very, very easy for people to move around so that at any point in time, even the embassy. The embassies can also be decentralized. For example, can we send the British embassy to send Tinani, send maybe uh, American embassy to say Tamale? Let's see how this thing can be done so that at any point in time, people will have easy access to this administration department. Thank you very much, Bob. Thank you. That's an interesting uh, perspective. Uh, decentralization <laughs> in the physical sense. Just uh, move everything out of the center, out of the capital, and you know, put them where they are most needed. So if you know that you want to really focus on agriculture in the, in the northern part of Ghana, put the Ministry of Agriculture right there. What do you think about that? Oh, uh, well, uh, you know, all these ministries have departments in the various districts. 
So the, the, you can access those services if you go to their departments in the districts. I think what he should rather ask for is more functions to be given to the departments in the various districts. So you don't have to come to Accra to do anything. But we cannot uh, uh, spread the ministries uh, all over the, the, the country, maybe Ministry of Agri in Tamale, Ministry of uh, Education in Enum, where I come from, or Ministry of this in another town. Th th that wouldn't be practical. The, the ministries are to be limited to coordination and policies and all that. So they can do that from Accra, whilst the actual implementation, as I said earlier on, are decentralized to the various districts. Okay, so my question about what composite budgeting is is still hanging. I've got another one coming up, but let's take another caller uh, once again from Tamale. Oscar, I believe. Good morning and welcome to Sunrise. Osman. Yeah, morning, pardon me. Pardon me, Osman. Yeah, I'm uh, Osman Hamakwara from Tamale. Good morning, Mr. Osman. Yes, I think, did I hear the gentleman saying that they should increase uh, the, the common fund to the zero this side or not? I'm suggesting that we should rather have a little bit system. A little bit is too much. If we are able to burn a little bit, there's no need to increase those money. Because the little bit is the biggest in terms of revenue collection and all that. The little bit is the difficult aspect of the whole system. So we should try to burn the little bit first before thinking of increasing the amount to the zero this right hand. Leakages in the assemblies? Well, uh, yeah. leakages in terms of revenue collection, leakages in terms of uh, effective disbursement or effective use of, uh, of resources. I think uh, what uh, Osman is talking about is similar to what the previous caller mentioned, about uh, there being just too much distance between where the, where the policy is actually made and where it is implemented. Accra and in this case, Tamale. Okay. Uh, from the leakages, he said, what I wanted to find out was whether he meant that there were leakages in the assembly system, such that if more resources are transferred to them, that would be a waste, or whether there is leakages in the entire uh, revenue collection, uh, because most of the revenues are collected at the national level, and then um, a percentage is transferred to the assemblies. The assemblies collect their internally generated funds, and that is not much. So if we talk of actual revenue collection, if that is the leakage he's talking about, then he means at the national level. But what I said was that as we seek to transfer more functions to the assemblies, the functions must be followed by the resources so they can perform them. You were asking about composite budgeting. Composite budgeting is uh, simply... Uh, putting together the budgets of the various departments at the assembly into one, into one budget. And previously, until last year when the composite budget was implemented, each department's uh, budget was channeled through their ministries or their departments in the uh, capital. But now with composite budget, all the departments of the assembly will have one budget, and that funds will be transferred to the assembly. So if you need to assess funds, you assess it at the district level, but not uh, through your, your parent ministry. And that okay. is further decentralizing uh, our process. Okay, I'll come back to the leakages, but uh, let's just uh, take another caller. Anas calling us from Bulga. Good morning, Anas, and thank you very much for calling Sunrise. Good morning. Good morning. Please, I, I want to make two interventions. Where, for instance, when it comes to this composite budget and something, um, I, from the understanding I have now, it's like the uh, assemblies will put up their own budget and uh, ensure that projects are undertaken from their various ends. But, Looking at the current situation where DCs are appointed by the president, usually it's the people, political people who are too political, saying that if their uh, party is not in power, they have no business going to the district assembly. Meanwhile, we all know that as a DC, just like the president, you are for everybody. 
So what I am suggesting is that this interministerial committee, uh, which is which has one of its members with you, should uh, be empower more NGOs or civil society organizations. Like we have one in Dorga here, where for which I am their finance officer. So that we will do education, we, we do education more in community basis to make people appreciate the need to engage the various district uh, metropolitan or municipal assembly officers to ensure that we actually get real decentralization at the grassroots. So I don't know how. I don't know how that uh, uh, as you have done, Alpha can connect some of this because we even have an association with, with the timetable and all this things to assist the real digital assemblies. I don't know how as a, as a media house or the international coordination committee can meet with civil society organizations like ours to ensure that this organization actually takes place as a plan because uh, as we all know, a plan is always a plan, but the implementation is always what Ghana has as a problem. So uh, I don't know how. Yeah. Okay, it looks like I've lost that color, but thank you very much uh, raising a really interesting point, empowerment. Uh, we spoke about that earlier on, but in the context of uh, shifting power or responsibility from uh, the key sector ministries uh, headquarters in Accra right uh, to where they are most needed at the district level. Lots of uh, comments coming in. Uh, Claudius Hope says uh, the District Assembly's Common Fund in the Local Government Act 455 of 1993 is given uh, purposely for infrastructure development, uh, mainly for infrastructure development. He's asking what then happens to other policy areas, uh, non-infrastructure development needs and programs. Uh, Menako Joe also on Sir Prince II says, uh, how is the District Assembly's Common Fund shared? Because I learned that there is a need to factor the equalization, responsiveness, service pressure. You mentioned uh, people not putting enough uh, pressure demand, the contingency, and he's asking for an explanation on that. And when it comes to empowerment, when it comes to empowerment, I think that can also be linked to the earlier comment about the leakages, about uh, management, just uh, simply management or effectiveness, monitoring and evaluation, which is one of the things that your committee does, holistic monitoring and evaluation. Now, in terms of uh, empowerment, for example, uh, knowledge is power, so information is power, uh, increasing transparency, uh, increasing responsiveness and so on and so forth, and allowing uh, individuals, CSOs and NGOs to participate more effectively in decentralization I wonder what your thoughts would be. Yeah, in fact, um, in response to that, uh, sometime last year, our office organized uh, a forum for CSO, civil society organizations in the northern sector. And the response was very great. They attended in their numbers. It was sponsored by the UNDP. And we had um, uh, people like Prof. Ahoy uh, and others address them. The National Decentralization Policy Framework uh, spells out the role of civil society organizations in all these implementation process because they are those that would ensure that those transparency and accountability that is needed in the whole process. And I must say that the response of the civil society organizations in the northern sector has been very great. They, they have been very proactive. What is lacking though is that if you realize uh, some of the concerns they raised was that if they go to an assembly for information, uh, they are viewed uh, negatively. It's like, oh, you are here to bother us, you are here to find faults and all that. So that is the aspect that we are trying to work on, for all the assemblies to know that they are partners in our development process and to open up for them. What we also need to do is to back that by law to ensure that the needed legislations are put in place to protect the civil society organization or to give them that mandate to be able to assess information from assemblies and also contribute to whatever discussions that are going on. Uh, one of the uh, messages we read was uh, talking about uh, the distribution of the common fund. 
the, uh, every year Parliament meets to consider a formula for the, the distribution. And I know that one of the components is uh, on a need basis. Areas that are you know, not well developed are given a lot more in that category and then also population size and, and stuff like that. So there is a formula that, that is normally approved by Parliament uh, every four years for, for the, the common fund to be distributed. Atai and Chief Francis Roosevelt, another viewer who is joining us uh, via Facebook, says, Eric, just imagine this issue of having to travel to Accra just to get your passport. For example, he's asking, you know, what, uh, what, what, what is the decentralization uh, take on this? Uh, Jerry Blantari says that he can define decentralization as the process of redistributing the functions, powers, and people away from a central location on authority, or authority, that's what we said. And then uh, Anako Jowusu and Sir Prince is coming back with another question. He says, decentralization uh, is working, at least, you know, it seems to be working uh, on the airwaves, but still local assemblies are not able to generate their own revenue and use it what is your comment on that in fact that, that is true you see uh, the central government collects the juicy uh, revenues those that are easy to collect and those that are you know no good and then those left for the assemblies to collect are those that are not cost effective to collect it's, it may even cost you more to, to, to collect those taxes. Uh, so it's true. That is why uh, the central government transfers a, a portion of the revenue they collect uh, to the assemblies. So until such a time that we will be able to get a lot of internally re re generated revenue by the assemblies, they will continue to depend largely on the common fund. Uh, but let me quickly say that Yes, decentralization is working not only on the airwaves, because if you look at how development is evenly spread over the, the, the country, it's, it's, uh, there has been tremendous improvement with this decentralization process, because now we have 216 uh, district assemblies, and the resources are distributed to every corner of the country, and so it is helping in somehow an equitable distribution. It's not perfect though, but uh, it is a great improvement. Okay, so here's a question, you know, they say killer bay will last show, so here's a killer question uh, just to wrap up our discussion. <laughs> I can see you smiling, don't worry, it's, uh, it's not that bad. <laughs> we keep talking about decentralization. How about uh, we start at the top? We decentralize some of the powers of the executive and really uh, push for election of DCEs rather their, than the appointment by the executive, that is the president. Would that help in any way at all? It will, it will, because it will let the DCs feel accountable to the people more than being accountable only to the appointing authority. There has been a lot of calls on this, and if you remember, the Constitutional Review Committee made that recommendation, and government issued a white paper on it. The president has said on several occasions that he's committed to working towards an election of a DC. So hopefully. Uh, if all the legal arrangements are sorted out, we will see uh, the election of DCs. Uh, however, the proposal has been that because Ghana is a unitary state with one president, the president should be able to implement his policies and programs in all parts of the country. So even though we are pushing for an election of a DC, the proposal has been that the president nominates five people, and then three will be presented, uh, I mean, they will be vetted, and three will be presented to the district for every voting uh, member of the district to vote. And whoever gets the majority becomes a DC. This way we will blend you know, you know, the situation, and then uh, we will have a DC who will be responsible to his people and also accountable to not only the people but the president and the president will also be able to implement his policies in the whole of the country one of our viewers is uh, still very pessimistic he is posting that ghana's decentralization is a form of re-centralization because at the end of the day central government still controls local government well we've uh, all but run out of time maybe there is uh, opportunity for one 
quick uh, question in here. Is there any time frame for this? Do you have clear timeline targets? Okay, by this time we achieve this, by that time we are supposed to have done that. Yes. If you look at the policy framework I keep talking about, it is supported by an action plan. And the action plan spells out who does what and by what time frame. So all the activities that are, lined, uh, that are outlined in the action plan are time bound. So that is the, 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 the good thing about our process right now, that we are not only saying uh, Ghana should do this, but we are giving a time limit to each of those. Uh, and this action plan, is it available to the public? Can I is, go online somewhere and download it? It is on our website, IMCC, and we have uh, printed a lot of copies uh, for distribution to civil society organizations and uh, to the district assemblies. IMCC, so I can go online, go to imcc.com, is it .org, .gov? .org.gh. Okay, yeah. .org.gh. Yeah. Look for the Inter-Ministerial Coordinating Committee if you're looking for information on decentralization. Well, I've been talking about this with Thomas Nyako Ampim. He is the financial officer of the IMCC, and I think we've touched on all, if not most, of the key points. Thank you very much for coming and having this you know, really frank and open discussion and for answering all the viewers' questions and comments.